Today we're looking at similar polygons. We're trying to identify similar polygons and find missing measurements using similarity criteria, find perimeters and areas of similar figures. Two polygons are similar if all of the corresponding angles are congruent and all of the corresponding side lengths are proportional. In the diagram below, we have QRS, and it is similar to XYZ, where when we're writing a similarity statement, we want to remember that corresponding vertices must be written in the same order. Now, we're going to first show these triangles. If you notice, angle Q is congruent to angle X, angle R is congruent to angle Y, and S is congruent to Z. Now, all of the angles are the same, but the sides are not. But what's happened is one triangle has just gotten bigger. So all of the sides are going to get bigger by a certain number, by a scale factor. And what happens is if I take all the ratios of the sides, like XY divided by QR and YZ divided by RS and ZX divided by SQ, the corresponding sides, if I take those and divide all of those numbers, they will all be an equivalent number if I were to reduce those fractions. And that is what we call scale factor. We're gonna take um, ABCD and EFGH, and we are going to find the scale factor. If you look at AB and EH and, and EF, those are the first two letters of our polygon. A, B, and E, F are corresponding sides. So when we write the scale factor, we're going to take E, F and divide it by A, B, which is 30. Now, we always want to take the second one and put it on top. Whatever we're ending up with, the shape we're ending up with, it's going on top. So if we have polygon A, the second one would be A prime. That tick is going to go on the top. So we've got 45 up top and 30 on the bottom. Now, if I were to reduce this, 15 goes into both 30 and 45. If I divide both of those by 15, 15, 30, 45 goes in three times and 30 divided by 15 is two. So three over two is our scale factor. That's the number we're multiplying by. Now, the scale factor of a similar we're going to find the scale factor of the second one. We always write our final one on top, 16 over 24. ZY is the same place on our, our uh, figure as ML. So 16 divided by 24, both of them divide by 8, and we get 2 thirds. Now if I take 16 over 24, that is the same as 10 over 15. 10 over 15 also reduces to 2 thirds. YX and MQ is going to be um, the same as ZY over ML. Now if we're going to write all of the, the angles that are congruent, uh, we're going to write Q is congruent to X. Those are at the same place in our figure. Also, M and D are the same on the first polygon. The second one, Y and W, are in the same place, and they have the same angles as the first one. M, D, Y, and W are all the same angle. Um, we also have L and O are congruent, and those are congruent to Z and V. So all four of those angles are congruent. So since all of the angles are congruent and all of the ratios are the same, these two are similar, okay? On example two, we have two triangles. The arrow is pointing to the left. The second one we wanna put on the top. So that hypotenuse is 10 on the second shape and five on the first. 10 divided by 5 is 2. This is twice as big as the first figure. 10 over 5 is equal to 8 divided by 4, which is also equal to 6 divided by 3. 
all of those, when you divide them out, equal two. So all of the sides have the same scale factor. All of the angles are the same. Let's go ahead and write uh, some statements that are the same. C is congruent to F. Um, we have angle A is congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E. Looking at three, we're trying to figure out if these polygons are similar. And if they're similar, we're writing a statement, a similarity statement and finding the scale factor. So we have eight divided by 24. Our final figure is eight, so that eight goes on top. And we put it with 24, those are corresponding sides. 17 over 51, those are both the hypotenuse of each triangle. 17 goes on top because it's the final shape. And 15 over 45. Now we want to reduce these fractions. If I divide both eight and 24 by eight, I get one third. So the second shape is one third the size of the first shape. Now I wanna just see if 17 times three is 51, because if it is, which it is, it's a one third as well. So if we divide 17 and 51 by 17, we get one third, and 15 over 45, we divide top and bottom by 15, and we also get one third. So all of the sides are exactly one third of the, of the size of the first one. All the angles are also the same. They need to be, the, because we have two angles that are the same, the third angle has to be the same because all triangles add up to 180 degrees. So triangle EDF has to be congruent to triangle uh, QPR. That scale factor is one third and we write the congruency statement here. EDF is similar to QPR. Now on example four, we have parallel lines on both of these quadrilaterals. If I were to take um, 70 and go across, the other one is 70 and on our first figure, it's 80. So these are not the same. So it is not similar. The, all of the angles have to be the same for these two quadrilaterals to be similar. Now let's look at example five. Now I'm not sure what that third angle is, but I can figure it out because all triangles add up to 180 degrees. So if I add 77 plus 30, I can add those together and I get 107 degrees. Now what I want to do is I want to take 180 and minus that 107. And when I subtract that, I get 73 for that third angle. Now if you look at that second, that smaller triangle, those angles are not the same. So they are not similar. All of the angles have to be the same if you have similar triangles. These are not similar. Looking at six, we have the same angles. Two on the J and K are congruent to Q and R, and N and P are congruent to M and L. All of the angles are the same. It's just been flipped upside down. Now we wanna figure out if the sides are proportional. So we always start with the second figure so I'm gonna take the short, uh, the JK, and that's gonna correspond with QR. So I'm gonna take 24 divided by 20. Now my second, uh, my second proportion would be 22.8 divided by 19. And my third one would be 42 divided by 35. Now we need to reduce these fractions. Now if I take 24 and 20, the biggest number I can think of that will go into both 24 and 20 would be four. I divide both top and bottom by four, I get six on top and, tw and five on the bottom. 
Now, 6 divided by 5, if I put that into a calculator, that is going to give me 1.2. I'm going to go to 42 and 35 because that's an even number. Divide both top and bottom by 7, I also get uh, 6 over 5, which is 1.2. So on this 22.8 over 19, that's not a really nice calculator to reduce. So I'm going to just put it in my calcula calculator here. I'm going to do 22.8 divided by 19, and I end up getting 1.2. Now, 1.2 is the same thing as 6 divided by 5. If I take 6 divided by 5, I get uh, 1.2 as well. 20, here's an example, 24 divided by 20, that also gives me 1.2. All of these give us 1.2, so they have a scale factor of 1.2, and uh, all of these are similar. So we are just going to say that JKML is similar to QRNP. So I have quadrilateral N. PRQ is similar to JKLM, and you just want to make sure those corresponding uh, angles are in the same place. On example seven, now I'm not, I'm trying to find out what X is, but I want to get the corresponding sides together. So if I look at AB and EF, that is the longest side on each of these figures. Now, I'm starting with A, B, C, D, and I'm ending with E, F, G, H. So the second one is the one that goes on top. I take 30 divided by 25. Those ones go together. They're the same place on these quadrilaterals. And I want to start with those because I have two numbers on both of them so I can figure out what the scale factor is. The second equation, or the second proportion is 3x divided by 15. And I'm just going to write this out, 3x divided by 15. And now we cross multiply. I'm going to take 30 and times by 15, and that is equal to 3x times 25. 3 times 25 is 75. I'm going to do 30 times 15, and I get 450 equals 75x. What I want to do is I want to divide both sides by 75. And I'm going to take my calculator again and do 450 divided by 75, and I end up getting 6. So the sec, uh, so my x is equal to 6. Now, JKLM is similar to NPQR. So I want to take my similar so similarity statements, and I want to make some proportions. I take my second one divided by my first one, 12 over 15. Those are the shortest sides on there, and they we have numbers for both. So we're going to write that down, 12 over 15. Notice up top, LM and QR are in the same place, so you can use that similarity statement to find which goes next. So I can take X plus 12 over 30. I cross multiply 12 times 30 equals 15 times X plus 12. I'm going to times 12 by 30. I'm going to put that into the calculator. And I get 360. You could also do 3 times 12 is 36 and add a 0 at the end. I'm going to distribute that 15. So I have 15x plus, and I'm going to times 12 and 15 to get 180. Subtract 180 from both sides of the equation. I have 15x on the right. And 360 minus 180, if I just uh, time, if I subtract these, I get 180. Now I'm going to divide by 15. 180 divided by 15 is 12. So x would equal 12 here. Looking at example 9, these triangles are kind of twisted, but we have corresponding angles that we want to keep together. Um, so we're going to solve for x and y. Now, if you look at these hy the hypotenuse of both of the triangles, those are going to be two numbers that we can set up our proportion with to find our scale factor. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes first because they're just kind of there. I'm just going to put 28 over 42, 
and I'm gonna take, but you've gotta keep the same ones on top. So I've got y and 33. We cross multiply 28 times 33 is 924 and that equals 42y. I divide both sides by 42 and I'm gonna put that in my calculator uh, and I end up getting y equals 22. Now I need to do the same thing for my x. Now I'm gonna use that same proportion of 28 over 42 and I'm going to say that equals 2x minus 8 on top and 30 on the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and times 28 by 30 and that's gonna equal 42 times 2x minus 8. Now I'm gonna put in the calculator 28 times 30 and we get 840 there. And now I need to distribute that 42 in. I get 42 times two is 84x and 42 times negative eight. Eight times two is 16, I'm gonna carry that one. Eight times four is 32 plus one is 33. That's how I got that there. I'm gonna add 336 to both sides of the equal sign and I get um, 84x on the right, and then I get 1,176 on the left. Divide by 84, I'm gonna take 1,176, divided by 84, and I get 14. So my x is going to equal 14 there. Now on the second one, I'm going to take, I've, I need a proportion that has a, um, that has two numbers. So 60 for the small triangle and 130 for the big one. 60 over 130 is gonna equal the small triangle, which is 42, divided by the big side of the triangle there, which is 11x minus eight. 42 times 130, we put, that is going to equal 60, times 11x minus eight. So I'm gonna go in ahead and put in my calculator 42 times 130, and we end up getting 5,460 on the left. Now I wanna distribute that 60 in. Six times 11 is 66, plus a zero is 660x. Six times eight is 48, add a zero is negative 480. I add 480 to both sides, zeros, add the eight and six, we get 5,940 is equal to 660x. We divide both sides by 660. The zeros cancel there, and I'm gonna get 594 divided by 66. My answer ends up being x equals nine.